Laura Schreiber here. As a mom of twins and a super cute dog, sometimes it's hard to know which end is up. Between my work as a full-time voiceover actress and being a mom and a wife, it never feels like there's enough time in the day. Anyone else feel like that? Lucky for me, I'm not in it alone. I have lots of amazing friends who have figured a few things out. So we've got your back, and together, working moms can support each other. To be here today with Helene Arst, mom of three and business analyst. Welcome, welcome. How was your day? Oh, it was exhausting as usual, but it was, I'm glad to be here. I know. And with this crazy weather, hot, cold, hot, cold, it doesn't make it any easier. Yeah, yeah. Is everybody well in your house? Everybody's great except for my dryer, which is broken. Oh, that doesn't make anything <laughs> so easier. Between everything, I had to go and bring everything to the laundromat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's terrible. I know. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about with three children who are a little bit spread apart in age, how your family responsibilities have changed over the years? Sure. So um, I have three kids. My oldest right now is 21 and my middle daughter is 19 and my youngest is 13. So like you said, there's been a spread of, you know, in ages. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I first started out, when my oldest was born, I thought I could just go in and work full time. Um, and over the years, it's my jobs have morphed um, based on, you know, the different kids that I had, the different ages. Um, so the responsibilities themselves haven't really changed because I'm still the mother right. and I still take care of everybody. Um, and that sort of was um, a decision that my husband and I made when, you know, at the beginning is I would be the primary person being home because he works in the city and he has a much more stressful job. Um, and clearly with three kids, it just gets harder and harder. Right. So yeah. has your work family balance shifted over the years? Completely, completely. So, you know, at different points, I worked full time. Um, then I worked part time in a capacity of like three days a week. Um, then at one point I stopped working because it was just too much to juggle. Right. Um, and I was lucky that financially we were able to, you know, do that. And, you know, we were, it was just, it was able, we were able to freeze my career for a little while. Um, and then I did go back part-time a few days a week. Um, and then I changed it to part-time uh, limited hours. Um, and now I'm back at full time. So, you know, as time transitioned, I transitioned. So it's interesting because now I've had the opportunity to speak with a few different women mm -hmm. in different fields. Right. And a common thread is that a lot of women, including myself, took a break from working. Were you nervous when you walked away for a little bit? It was very nerve wracking because I've always considered myself, you know, a career person. Um, that has, it, it, it defined me at one point of who I was. Um, and to stop working was, especially in the field that I am in technology, which is moving so quickly and so fast um, and dominated by men. Um, I was very worried that it would, I would not be able to get back into it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, it was part luck and part just, you know, uh, carving out different things um, that I was able to figure that out. But yeah. So what have been the biggest challenges for you over the years? Um, the biggest challenges have been really the juggle. Um, juggling everything. Being there for my work full time and at points it was literally, you know, in technology sometimes they want you all the time. Right. Not just a nine to five job. Um, so that, you know, and putting everything into that and being there for my family um, and being the type of person that I am, which is like a perfectionist, got to be perfect, got to do everything perfectly, giving 100 percent of myself to everybody. And then one day saying, oh, my God, I'm not doing anything well. I'm not being a good mother. I, I'm things are falling apart. I'm not, which they really weren't, but you know, you feel That's that way. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you're not putting the same emphasis on work as 
your coworker who has no children is single and can stay all hours and likes that and wants to do it. And you're just looking at the clock saying, oh my God, I got to get home <laughs> or my kid is sick. What do I do? Um, so that's the biggest challenge I've had is, you know, just learning to um, accept that I'm not perfect at everything, um, letting go a little bit and, you know, figuring out how to balance, find that balance. It is. It's really hard. So yeah. how do you cope? What are some of the tips or tricks that you've come up with in the 21 years that you've been a mom? <laughs> um, I, I've been lucky that some of the work that I've done is from home. So like the job that I'm in now, I have arranged for two days to work from home. That has been amazing because I can put in a laundry um, right. or after I drop the kids off at school, I can run to the grocery store and still be home earlier to start work than I would have if I was commuting to an office. So that has really helped me. I wish I was able to you know, negotiate more of that, mm -hmm. um, but that to me has been really helpful. Um, also, you know, if you have to take a kid to a doctor's appointment or something, then that hour lunch, which I really don't take lunch, but if you can consider that an hour lunch, you can go in and, you know, take your kid. Um, and the work won't suffer from that. So that has been, you know, one element. The other is just realizing that really you can't do it all, you know, and if you're not going to bake the cake for this class and you go and get Entenmann's or you're not going to volunteer as much um, and your kids are going to be fine. Um, right. Yeah, it's just understanding what's really important. So giving yourself a little bit of forgiveness. So yeah. Anything that you know now that you wish you knew when you were younger? Um, the main thing is, and you know, this is for me, you know, the aha moment. And I'm not sure that every woman finds this, but I feel that we were misled into believing that we can do everything. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and I still believe that, you know, everybody has a choice. Everybody can make that choice but you can't be everything. It's impossible. Right. And, you know, when we're, we were in college, you know, we were led to believe you can study anything and be anything. And that is true. But if you want to be a mother, that juggle is very hard. And there's certain professions that make it even more hard, more difficult. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> there's one of my children. Yeah. <laughs> FaceTime. Um, and, um, just, you know, recognizing that, um, you know, you, you have to make those choices. Um, you can't do it all. Is that background noise bothering you? No, it's fine. Okay. Um, so if there's like one takeaway that you want people who watch this video to see, like one thing that you want them to really remember about what your experience have been or something mm -hmm. has been or something that you want them to remember about their life and perspective, what would that takeaway be? Um, for me, family is everything. Okay. Um, and you know, I love working. I don't regret working, but I know that if there's a choice of me being there for my family or my kids versus staying late for doing one more thing for work, work is never going to remember that I did that one more thing. Right. And my kids there's certain things. I mean, certainly you have to make those choices. I mean, it's, your kids aren't always first, but there's certain elements where the family is first. And, you know, if your kids are really sick, you stay home. Right. <laughs> and not, or you can try, or you make arrangements that somebody can be there for them. But as long as they feel safe and that they feel that, they're, that you're involved and you're protected, that's really important. And it might not be you necessarily, it could be, you know, the person that you've, you're a family member or somebody you've hired, but somebody that is there for them always. And they know that. To me, that's number one. Because um, in the end, the companies, and you know, they say you can die and, you know, you're not going to say, oh, I wish I worked more. You know, it's a classic thing. It's really true. Um, but your kids will know that you were there um, and your family. So... To me, that was, that's the most important thing that I've learned over the years. And they do remember. 
you that's know? amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. That's so yeah. nice. I love the way you said that. That's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. I so appreciate you taking the time to do this because I do not know how your days and your weeks are. And <laughs> I'm going to be sending along a little sparkle tank top for you on the front of this. So never let anyone dull your sparkle and then the back <laughs> On your back. I love it. It's that. super soft. I showed it to Shira when I saw her last. So I hope you so like cute. it. <laughs> I like I love tank tops when I go walking and things. So even though it's getting a little cooler now, I hope you still enjoy it. Oh, that's it. adorable. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Wear it in good health. Thank you. Well, I can't thank you enough. Thanks so much. Hello. Right. I'm gonna remember our dreams are all possible. Don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. Together, our sparkle is brighter. Copyrights and production rights by Laura Schreiber Voice, LLC.